Hi Virgo, welcome to Higher Source Tarot for your 2022 tarot predictions. This is a tarot reading for all Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. I thank all of you so much for your support all for this year and a half. It means the world to me. I love tarot. I've told you that. It's part of who I am. And I can't do this without you. We are connected. And every day I send you my love. I really do and appreciate you. And if you are new here, welcome to you. I post new readings every Friday, then again on Monday. So if a reading doesn't resonate, come back in a couple of days and watch a new reading. Um, or you can look on Mondays because the style of reading is different every week. So this week, we've got a year ahead, right? But other weeks, it's a love reading. There's a pick a card reading. And then every quarter, I do a four-month predictive reading. So you can come back for those too. And if you like tarot and you like the channel, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to higher source tarot. All right, uh, what advice do you have for Virgo? Sun, moon, rising, and Venus. What does Virgo need to know, please? What messages do you have for Virgo for their highest and best good? All right, here we go. So we'll begin here with our tarot reading, then what we're gonna go month by month, okay? And then we're going to have an Angel Answers Oracle card reading. Then we'll have a special message from Louise Hay. So we begin January with the Two of Wands. February brings in the Queen of Swords. You've got the Nine of Swords in March. In April, we've got the Hanged Man. In May, we've got Judgment. June, the Three of Swords. July, the Queen of Pentacles. August, the Lovers. September, the High Priestess. October, we've got Justice, November, the Eight of Wands, and we've got in December, there's a bit of thinking going on this year. It's interesting because it's like one time each quarter. <laughs> so you may have too much thinking one time each quarter. We'll try to keep it to a minimum. Um, but you've got on the bottom of the deck the three clarifiers here, uh, the, the Ace of Cups, the Page of Cups, and the Five of Wands here. So wands are all about enterprise expansion and growth. Fives are about change. They're, they can be about adventure too. So some of you may have some growing pains if you've got something to do with work here. I do feel like there's a new opportunity here. Now, I know the page of cups can be manifesting an X. You definitely have a love relationship here. So if there have been some issues with that, it may be about healing that relationship. But with the five of wands here, for some of you, it's all about leaving the drama behind. The Ace of Cups is a never-ending kind of a love. It's an emotional intensity. It's something that really draws you in. So it could be, like I said, it could be a commitment with work because you do have the Queen of Pentacles here too. Um, but it also, in a love relationship, it's a relationship that you don't want to end. It's a soulmate connection. It's an important relationship. There's abundance here, and it's like this pull, right? So the page here, this page of cups, he is about manifesting, all right? So some of you have been manifesting this situation that's coming into your experience here. Um, the pages, too, are all about, they remind me of the fool energy. They're enthusiastic, they're optimistic, they're upbeat kind of energy. So some of you, it's it's a nod to wanting to get out of dramatic relationships and into something that has more fun and levity and, you know, not needing to ask, for lots of feedback and praise all the time if you've been in something that was very needy. Um, I do see, though, changing your perspective on something. There's a bit of a conflict in here, and I see somebody, like your heart opening, your mind opening. You have here five major arcana. You've got Gemini, Libra, Taurus here. You've got a lot of air in this, okay? So Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. If you've got an air sign in your life, they're definitely showing up here. It doesn't have to be, but they are in the reading. Um, so with the two of wands, twos are all about multiplication. You've got in the wands are that enterprise and growth. So with the two of wands, you may start off the year having some pretty specific intentions, having goals set for yourself, but it's with a... Um, it's like there's there's a, a, an ability with this to direct your ideas into things. So it's not just having great ideas that don't go anywhere. The two of wands moves things forward. If you're going to start some kind of business this year, if you've been thinking about YouTube or social media or being on Etsy and creating a shop, 
And this is the year to start it. You've got wonderful aspects here. Now, again, I'm not a financial advisor. Tarot is not a financial advisor. I'm just telling you the energies is, are sh showing great alignment with that. And again, there may be some little setbacks here and there with it, but it's all about moving forward with this energy. I mean, he's a um, an entrepreneur. You know, it's about moving forward, being creative, and not letting anybody talk you out of your good ideas. That's the other thing. We don't have the magician here, but he oftentimes shows up when there could be some naysayers around us. And he teaches us to keep our good ideas to ourselves. So the Queen of Swords comes in in February. And it's a rather intense energy. She's very no-nonsense. So for some of you, there may be a conversation here, whether it's at work um, or with somebody that you know, love interest here. And this kind of energy, we have to be careful around this because we don't want to say things that create destruction, right? Because she's very straightforward, very direct, and sometimes she can be a little hurtful. But there's clarity here. Now, I will say that she can also be um, an energy of a lawyer. You've got that a couple of times. So I do feel like you have no need to worry here. But with this, if you've got something legal going on, it may not conclude towards the end of the year, but it does go in your favor. You know, it gets directed, but there's sort of like this free-floating anxiety that pops in once in a while during the reading. And so meditate, quiet your mind, listen to spiritual teachers, listen to people who have been through stuff and have come out on the other side, listen to motivational speakers, because with this, she has wounds, but she uses those as wisdom. And oftentimes when we see something as a failure, it really is just the universe saying, look, you're not in the right spot. You've asked for something with an intensity and the way that you're going isn't going to get you there. So I'm going to pull you over here. And sometimes we don't like how that goes, right? I've been through it myself. So with the Queen of Swords, she also is the widow of the tarot. Um, and so it may even feel like on some level, there's a, a death. I mean, I'm not saying there is going to be a death, but it may feel like that. It's that when we we grieve a relationship, it can feel that way because it's really the death of what we thought was going to be. And so through that, we are able to, you know, it's it's through that energy that we connect with something even better. We don't just let it keep us there. So um, with the Nine of Swords being in March, Again, there's that, this is the, you've got it twice, really three times here, um, where it feels restricted, but nines are about completion and realization. So with this, we allow ourselves to see the light. We don't just stay in the darkness here. He's got that quilt that's covered with the red roses of desire and the zodiac sign. So with this, if you find two, some of you, because you are starting something new here, if it's a business or something like that, this may also indicate sleeplessness. And some of you, it's just being excited about taking off, getting things going. And so you want to be aware of that just to make sure, you know, again, that you're taking good care of that physical body because our spirit still needs this body to wander around this earth. So now here's where the perspective changes into April here. It's that aha moment, surrender to win. The hangman releases all resistance of the nine of swords, which is wonderful. The hangman is completely unbothered. He hangs upside down. It always reminds me of my coworker that I tell him he could never get into an argument with anybody. He's just so agreeable. He's very easygoing. So for some of you, if it's a new love interest that shows up here, part of it is you being in this easygoing space because we don't want to attract people when we're a nine of swords. Um, because when we're like that, we're going to attract a low vibrational match. So for some of you, it's almost like the getting ready for the relationship to show up. The um, the hanged man is all about seeing things through the eyes of source. Uh, it's a reversal or a change of mind here for some of you. And again, I did mention there's an X and it's possible that you'll have a reconnection with that person sometime in the spring and your mind will be different. I also think they're going to come back different though. And that's a big part of it. Because getting back together with the same old person, it just gives the same re relationship. So, you know, be aware of this. I say periodically, those of you that are interested in re reconciliation, we don't want to keep the same t-shirt we were wearing when we broke up, right? We don't want to keep things around that just remind us of pain. There's a renewal here. And so with this, it's like a free-spirited energy that brings in new new aspects. 
And so we show up in May. This is wonderful because judgment is revolutionary. This is self-mastery. And the hanged man is very important in this. It's like that change of perspective brings in new opportunities. And we see it. I mean, there's multiple ways that we could do this. But again, there's a very important relationship here. And it's through that maturity of, of judgment and the hanged man that you get there. So judgment is a card of releasing all all judgment too. It's a decision. Like we said, there is a decision that goes in your favor. So whatever it is who, for whoever this is, and maybe some of you, you're going to say, look, it's not that part of it is not my reading and that's okay. We don't have to relate to pain. Sometimes it just shows up because there's a lot of cards here today and a lot of energy is going on. But with judgment, it is that um, realization getting, this is also about a new perspective, but it's a wider lens. It's like seeing things through the eyes of source in a very clear way. So you don't have all these hangups. You don't have all the restriction. This liberates you from the coffin of the ego. It liberates you from, you know, what other people maybe thought you should be doing. So for some of you, if it's a business in May, that may be where you really jump off and see, hey, this is going to be something. This is going somewhere. Or if it's just a new job for you again, You've got a very harmonious energy here. So into June, we've got the Three of Swords, but this is not new pain. It's like acceptance, all right? So I would not see this as necessarily negative. It's almost just an icon of healing. The Threes are, again, about multiplication, growth, development, expression. And so with this, it may be that expression of, for some of you, if you're bringing somebody back around, you may be very upfront with them and say, I don't want that pain back in my life. This will be different or it just won't be. I hear somebody saying that. Um, but for others of you, the acceptance of this, it brings renewal. And so you go, what I love about this is you go from June with the three of swords. It's kind of like you get to the place where you can put Humpty Dumpty back together again. And you go right into your own energy in July. So the queen of pentacles here brings in new opportunities. Some of you may meet somebody here. It looks really good for July, August, all the way through the end of the uh, end of the year. It's almost like you need this healing energy. You need to figure out some of these other conflicts that may even be left over from 2021. And then here you go. So with the Queen of Swords, you've got a bit of perfectionist here, holding high standards, perfectionism. And with that, that's okay because you're going to attract a match. You attract what you are. And so you're not going to attract a relationship that's a fixer-upper in this. Um, she's very well connected with the community. So you may find in July, you're meeting lots of people, you're getting out there, you're getting good social contacts, and you may even have somebody who fixes you up if it's not a reconciliation for you. This is also great financial stability. So you have nice aspects for money too showing up here. And so anything that you've done with work, if it seems like, you know, you get off and it was sort of a kind of a push-pull thing going on, this is where you really hit your stride and feel like, okay, this is making sense. She's a very financially savvy energy, so you also be very smart with money, but there's abundance here. So it's not like a need to really restrict money and pull in the purse strings. That would be more like the page of Pentacles. With this, there's a robust cash flow coming in. So into August here, we've got the lovers, and we love to see this Gemini energy showing up. It's a it's an energy of real love, real commitment, but there's a lot of esoteric um, symbolism in this. This is a card of um, your subconscious being connected with the, the divine, so sometimes uh, it's a very important to pay attention to dreams in this kind of energy. So in August, you may have vivid dreams that are also very telling dreams. They're important. Um, but it's using the conscious mind and atom to influence the subconscious and, and create with the divine. It's you're a co-creator in this universe. It's a very important relationship that shows up here. Now, I will tell you too, Adam and Eve here, they're standing in, in, in this place of creation, of growth and expansion. They are not bothered by the temptations over their shoulders. They are oblivious to them. They don't care about them. So for any of you here too, in a relationship, it is a relationship where there's trust and integrity. There's no fear in this. It's all about moving forward. There is a choice though, okay? Um, for some of you too, if you're already in a relationship, 
and the um, the conflicts that are here have something to do with work or maybe there was some kind of a lawsuit or something like that or money that was owed to you. Um, this can also be a symbol of fertility, okay, the mountain and the drop backdrop. So if you've been worried about that as well, this could also be a good month too for fertility and um, growth expansion of a family. So September brings in the high priestess and I always feel like she's kind of the unsung hero of the tarot. She's the psychic of the of the um, deck. And also with the the dream interpretations, the archangel that's here, your, your connection to the divine is wide open here. She balances polarities too, though. So if there's polarizing energies around you, like maybe you're in a relationship and somebody you're with is dealing with a lawsuit or dealing with all these headaches, and that's why it's showing up because you're a support system for them. With this kind of energy, she has a gift for balancing that. She is an energy, though, of solitude. She kind of likes to work by herself. So if you're one that, again, you're starting something new, you may have, by the time September rolls around, you may have people come in and say, hey, I can help you with marketing or whatever. And, you know, if it's something like YouTube, you may not need it because you just need to know the algorithm. Get comfortable with that. And once you're once you're in there, things will grow. So, again, it may be you also kind of staying true to your own brand or developing your career in a way where you're not looking for a lot of outside influences. I just get that. Um, but she holds the laws of life on her lap. She holds the book of Torah. So you are definitely in an energy where you're connected with source energy. And she's the Pope of Joan. She stays true to herself. So there's not a lot of like um, deviating from this. She is also, though, the work of the subconscious. So that's going to be important for you. So into October, you've got Libra energy showing up. This is where it feels like something is finally taking form, whatever decision has kind of been hanging out here gets decided and it moves you forward. There's an energy here, though, of the absolute truth. It's also about knowing yourself. And as you know yourself, you know the universe. So there's a strong desire here in terms of moving forward with balance and harmony, not being in conflict anymore. And I don't see it, even though you got the Eight of Swords here, I actually feel like things move forward for you with the Eight of Wands. It's interesting that the Eight of Swords and Eight of Wands are right next to each other. Because with justice, this is like the universe bringing in action. You know, it's it's um, cause and effect. So if there was something that happened that seemed unfair, here you go, where it seems like, okay, this is making sense now. And the universe has this way of keeping balance. Even if it seems like it takes a little while, it always happens. I've seen it many times in my own life. And so with this, this is where things get into balance and they seem fair again. So we live in a just universe. There's always a, you know, there's always a reaction to things that are put out there. The Eight of Wands is like brace yourself for change here. Now, I do feel like some of this energy moving forward may create some of that Eight of Swords. Again, you can use your own free will. So if you say, I don't want to be restricted, I'm just going to learn how to embrace change. Learn how to thrive in change. That's really what this is about. Um, with this, it is the arrows of love. So again, a relationship moves forward. And for some of you, the Eight of Swords may be part of moving forward in a relationship, may create some, some energy around you that we'll talk about in a minute. But this is all about rhythm and vibration, evolution. It's an energy of, again, growth and expansion. So there's a conversation here. There's information here. And it does feel like in terms of a commitment, it's all about moving things forward. And it may be information too with a business, but with the aid of um, swords being here in December, to me, it feels like it's because the water in the, the card represents guilt. It feels like there's a lot of people here who it's not that they have bad intentions for you, but it's almost like they've got a lot of fear. That's what it feels like. And they kind of put their limiting beliefs on you. Okay, I'm just going to be open about that. So for you, you may have to be cautious about that. Again, we talked about the magician, even though he's not here, in terms of who you tell what to, because there's nothing that can kill a dream like telling it to a small-minded person. This is all about allowing yourself to expand. It's a self-imposed prison, and it's oftentimes from getting too many people in the mix. So again, you use the tarot as guidance. It's your best friend that tells you the truth. So we want to utilize this energy so we don't get caught in it because you've got great vibration moving forward 
for like six months, seven months, and then we get into here and it's like, well, wait a minute, why is that there? Well, it does feel like it's all about other people and just kind of being aware of that, giving, and it's not dishonesty just because we don't, you know, go through the, the your street like the town crier telling everyone your business. Um, there may be a relationship that some people don't necessarily um, they don't think that it's, it's, it's none of their business, but there may be something about it that's scary for them, especially if it's reconciliation. For others of you, if you're taking a risk with building something in your career, again, they may be more inclined to say, hey, do the safe thing, not the exciting thing. Um, but I do feel like it's, it's, again, it's restricting you. It's not necessarily helpful. Oh God, we got helpful people. Isn't that funny? Just as I said, helpful. So with this, <clears throat> again, there's using your discernment because with this, you've got that your two best friends here are the front two swords. The very first sword is your higher self that will never steer you wrong. It's this peanut gallery behind her. So, okay, it doesn't mean that we don't talk to anybody. It's just we're more discerning here. So they say, look for a sign. There's always signs and synchronicities all around you, Virgo. You've got romance. I'm telling you, there's somebody here that does have love for you. Um, whether it's reconciliation or it's somebody new. And, and it feels like the new or the relationship really starts over here in the spring. You've got in the near future. And you've got a yes, okay? I haven't seen that a lot. I've seen a lot of take action. So let's hear from Louise Hay here. Life loves you. I see myself through the eyes of love. Look in the mirror and say, I love and accept myself exactly as I am. Keep saying it until you really feel it because life loves you. I love you and good things are on the way. I will be back again soon.